What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. In this video we are jumping into Ultimate Invasion issue number 2. We have seen that the maker is trying to remake everything, taking us to Earth 6160. He plans to make sure that Earth's mightiest heroes never become heroes at all. He wants to do this so that he can reshape the universe into exactly what he wants it to be. And now we get a glimpse into that. We get to see how the Maker is rearranging the events that are supposed to take place. We get to see how the Maker ensures that Earth's mightiest never come to be. What small details he changes to ensure that they never manifest. That they never come to be. And we will see that there are some events he simply cannot change. Some people that he cannot ensure will never come to be. But there are things that he can do to ensure that they never make their arrival to interfere with everything that he is doing. And so let's go check out exactly what the Maker has planned. How he is going to stop the Avengers from being. How he will remake this world in his own image. Make sure you guys have subscribed to the channel. Make sure that you like this video. And with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, we are picking up with a memory. When the Maker had asked Mr. Fantastic, Would you erase me from existence? If you could do it all again, if you had the chance, would you do it? Mr. Fantastic had said yes, and so the Maker is saying that he's gonna keep that in mind. But what do you do when you know exactly the full knowledge of your enemies? You have the unlimited capacity to engage them. You can do this before they ever have the faintest idea that you even exist. The simple answer, you can do whatever you want. And of course, there's going to be differences in this universe deviations and branching possibilities. But that doesn't change the fact that there is still places like Asgard. But the Maker ensured that Thor would never be able to make it to Earth. He did this by ensuring that Loki was the one to take the throne. That Thor was the one to bend the knee. Shattering the Bifrost, Asgard would remain away from Earth. A rocket launch delaying the Fantastic Four from ever becoming fantastic. But regardless of the Maker's actions, mankind will still thrive for war. They will still create weapons of war. And there will still be men who make such weapons. Individuals like Howard Stark. Bullets will always be fired. Bombs will always explode. The Hulk will still become the Hulk. But there may be missing parts of history. For example, there was no man in the ice to murder. No super soldier to lead the Avengers. With no Doctor Doom, the Maker took over this place as his own. Remaking an entire city. But we jump over to Manhattan. We pick up with Howard Stark Iron Man. But we also pick up with his partner Obadiah. We are already seeing the small differences that are this universe. In this universe, Jarvis is not an AI computer or anything of that manner. Jarvis is his female butler. But Obadiah and Stark, they sit down. They kind of have a conversation. Because the Maker is getting ready to have a very extravagant and elaborate party. He is asking everybody to show up. Obadiah is trying to encourage Howard to go out there and really just do an appearance. That he needs to get out of the lab. He needs to show his face to the world. Let the people love you. But as they discuss all this and they prepare to head out, that's what takes us to Latveria. Anybody who is anybody is attending this event. The first one being introduced is the enlightened children of the eternal light. They rest in the shadow of the protective hand of their highest holy man, the legendary and immortal Hulk. The Rasputin family needing no introduction, Colossus, Magic, and Omega Red. They have all shown their faces here as well. As we see the doorways open up, we have the Maker that comes out of them. Making his way down the stairs, he looks at all the people that have come to greet him. But then he looks up to the sky. He already knows what is coming, saying that he is waiting. We see a portal open up from the clouds, and from that portal, we have multiple versions of Captain America, of Thor, of Wasp, 
they come descending down on the Maker, with Thor giving the orders that just the Maker and other acceptable targets, that is who they are taking out and no one else. We see this battle quickly get underway, with Howard Stark having no idea what is going on, Obadiah asking if he brought his portable suit, but Obadiah asked him not to, and so Howard didn't. Luckily, Obadiah did. Pressing a button on his watch, we see the suit come out, and Obadiah jumps into the fray. Because the people of this earth, they have no idea who these individuals are. They just know that they are being attacked by an outside force. And so Magic, Colossus, the Immortal Hulk, they are all fighting against these Avenger forces that have come to take down all of the Maker. But with this battle raging on, we see Obadiah fall. The visions grabbing hold of him, the suit hitting critical, saying goodbye to his oldest friend Howard. We see the Iron Man suit detonate, a giant explosion and Howard is shot back. With this battle raging on, Howard is knocked unconscious, and when he wakes up, he is in the company of the Maker. He lets him know that Obadiah has died. And he wishes that there may be time to grieve, but time is something that they are short on at the moment. As Howard gets up and he really starts to look around, what we see is that all of those heroes had been captured. Every single one of them. Now at this point, Howard has no idea who they are. But the Maker lets us know that these are heroes from the future. Temporal suicide bombers here to erase the Maker. The question isn't why. The Maker says that the question is, does it make you fear the terrible things that you are going to do in the future, or does it anger you that they tried to rob you of a chance you once had? Regardless, the Maker has a way of taking care of this. This is where he escorts in a bunch of people. They have done a very regressive scan of each of the future soldiers. They discovered that almost all of them are identical designer clones. They tracked the source to where all of this came from. And so all of these people, we see the Maker massacre them. And with all of them being taken out, all of these heroes from the future, we see them just turn into piles of goo. The Maker has just erased from the future an entire army from existence. By killing these people here and now, it erases all of these heroes from the future. Now Howard goes on to say what you have just done. This will ensure that they come back and they erase you in everything that you have done. That they will kill you in the crib. But for the Maker, this won't work. He wasn't born here. Not in this place, not on this planet, or even this universe. He emerged fully formed. So if they are going to come to him, they will have to do it at the height of his power. This is where the Maker takes him into the other room and shows him the Immortus Engine. This is a time machine. This is why they came here. The Maker is letting him know that this time machine, it is damaged. It is non-functional. And while Howard wants to destroy it, the Maker says that that doesn't make any sense. He wouldn't even if he could. Because if you look around, this world was perfectly ordered society. That none of this went how it was supposed to go. And that is all because of this machine and the Maker. He used it to remake the world into a new erase threats before they even emerged, and repurposing existing pieces, like Howard, for a grander design. Now Howard is going on to say that this was just your first encounter. They will return. They will come back for you. This is where the Maker takes off his helmet and lets him know that this was the second encounter. The first was two weeks ago. The first meeting left quite an impression. With his helmet being removed, we see that a good chunk of his head is missing. And Howard's confused. How is the Maker still alive? But his body isn't like everybody else's. For self-preservation, he chose to separate and redistribute his brain and vital organs a long time ago. He will heal, but it is going to take time. Right now, his memory is impaired. It is flawed and it is fractured. He cannot trust what he remembers, because he is remembering things incorrectly. What he does know is that he needs Howard Stark, more than anybody else in this world and many others. Because he believes that Howard Stark is the one that built this time machine. And that will be the end of this issue. 
so let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Definitely an interesting world that the maker is building, using the time machine to change and manipulate everything, ensuring that Thor never shows up, though we do see in the future that many Thors have shown up to fight, that they have traveled time coming back to try and take the maker down. Obviously, that failed, and all of those heroes got wiped out almost instantaneously. But they are being very cloak and dagger on what the overall goal is going to be here. Once he has ultimate supremacy, then what? What does he do from there? Does he just lead? Does he sit on his throne and observe the world that he has created? How many more times will he have encounters with heroes? Will they always be? Will they always come? Or will he find a way to ensure that this world stays separate from heroes forever? This has left us with so many questions, but we are seeing that Earth 6160, it is truly being built in the image of the Maker. Now that the groundwork has been laid, it is going to be very interesting to see what the Maker does next. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you would like to get completely caught up on everything going on with Ultimate Invasion, be sure to check out the link in my description, as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything going on with this series. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership. Much like Patreon, having multiple different tiers, from $1 to $50, from loyalty badges to comics every single month. Not only are you helping out the channel tremendously, but you are getting tons of perks in the process. If you are unable to do this, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.